Hey boys and girls, it's Nice Talker here. Welcome along today's video about the mercenary units in the game. So, uh, I guess the question is probably why would you want a mercenary unit? So, let's take a look at that real quick. Let's take a look here. All of the mercenary units get this particular uh, unit trait, the own supply chain, which means that you never have to refresh their, their uh, models in the unit or the unit kits. You never have to worry about that. But that's kind of a minor side thing. The real reason you want uh, the, the mercenary units is this trait, Exemplar. This unit gives a bonus to you and your, your units in battle, plus 10% hero XP and unit XP and plus 10% honor. Now, when you take the units into battle, um, they will give you this bonus on top of all the other bonuses that you get. Any kind of bonus that you've got, this is on top of it. And it is listed separately um, in the, the end of game, you know, the first screen. Uh, top right, it will show you how much extra, extra stuff that you get, right? It's the third line down. And it's really, really useful to have this. You know, every every 10 battles you get, you get a battle for free in terms of honor and stuff. And and over time, in a grindy game like this, it certainly adds up. And it is very worthwhile having. First of all, let's head straight on over to the mercenaries. So the ones that we're talking about today are the Sea Stag Death Dealers, uh, the Black Dragon Archers, Black Dragon Pikemen, Black Dragon Javelineers, Black Dragon Spearmen, and Martella Lori. And they all play very differently, as you might imagine. And the plan today is to play three very condensed games. Uh, I will let it play when the units are in play and fast forward it in between, maybe even cut some out, just so you can see how each of these plays. And hopefully we can get all, uh, all five into each game, or, sorry, all six into each game. Probably not, but at least you'll get to have a bit of uh, an idea about them. And once we've played those three games, I'm going to, during those games, explain a little bit about them, what they're close to, what sort of value they have, and then I'm going to give you a summary right at the end of the battle. So, without further ado, let's get into some games to see how they function, and do they do their job? Because that's what I'm going to rate them on today. A 1 to 10 scale of do, do, do they do their job, are they worth the money, the silver or the gold, and are they worth taking it all? Let's go on over now. Alrighty, so here we are fighting on a siege tower. It's just been pushed in and uh, make sure I don't get trapped by that shield unit, because if you get trapped in a shield unit, you're not coming back out. I call up my javelins in the shield wall formation. I call it shield wall formation, but it's kind of not very strong shield wall. And when I'm attacking here, I'm just using the V key. Um, I, I find that it makes them target better with these black dragon javelineers. Um, and watch what happens here. If you see on the map, there's someone coming up behind us. And I, at this point, I hadn't noticed it, but I sent them back and then he went to get stuck in. I took a glance at my map and I noticed he was there. So I hit the V key. Just like any other javelin unit, they will kill a hero who they can clearly see. A poor hero had no chance whatsoever. Now, what I would compare this unit to is probably uh, not, uh, I think it's a bad comparison, the Imperial Javelineers, but kind of the same, the way that they work, advance up with a shield wall, advance up with a shield wall and throw. But also, the only way to throw is to basically just launch the javelins or to um, target them with a circle. So they're kind of a crossover between, say, the Javelin Militia and the uh, Domain um, Javelins. So let's skip forward now until we get the next unit out. Righty, and this time we're going for the Black Dragons. Of course we're going for the Black Dragons, what am I saying? We're going for the Black Dragon Pikes. Now, the unit to compare these two is undoubtedly Prefecture Pikemen. And just like Prefecture Pikemen, they're terrible against enemy infantry. Um, but if you catch an enemy hero with the charge, you will absolutely kill them. Just the same as the Prefecture Pikes will. <laughs> Poor guy. There's a laugh at him. Oh, I didn't do the animation. <laughs> anyway, basically... Um, this was a bit of a fail, because I'll show you why. They they do get absolutely destroyed when you charge infantry, especially in this case, Prefecture Guard, who have got the Prefecture Drill. So watch what happens. What I'm really hoping here is to try and hit the um, the musket, or maybe if that maul comes back here. 
but if they're going to hide in the unit like this, watch how quickly that unit just decimates them. Absolutely destroys them. So keep that in mind. Just like Prefecture Pikes, uh, they're, they're made to snipe off heroes. Let's move to the next unit in this battle. Here we go with the Sea Stag Death Dealers. Now, what do I compare the Sea Stag Death Dealers to? Um, I would compare them to terminally blind iron cap gunners. <laughs> Why terminally blind? Because I swear these guys, they fight blindfolded. Um, they're just absolutely appalling shots. They can't hit the broadside of a barn door. And as I'll show you in just a moment, their aim and fire animation is very poor as well. So what I mean by very poor is it's very slow. They bring it up to aim, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Then they fire, and then they reload, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Then they aim, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Watch this, I'm trying to bait these land sharks, which works, watch this. So I bait them out, and we move out the way so that they miss us. And then any other gunner unit now would start pouring fire into them and start killing them. But that's not the case. Not only do they get jumped on by the squires, um, they, <laughs> they still manage to get they walk into the unit and just wipe it because they cause no casualties whatsoever even at that point blank range as gunners they killed none and as you can see they fall over in a strong breeze so i'm just going to thank my friend here for his cooperation in this little trap and unfortunately that didn't pan out because they're such a garbage unit <laughs> honestly let's move on to the next one so here we go with the black dragon spearman now the job of a spearman is to create a shield wall and the black dragon spears they do that really well actually you can see that you've got a number two easy heal and you know if you're a long sword particularly they can do this for quite some time if they're only taking ranged fire they will they'll never die you know it's when heroes get into them or they start having to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat that they really start to fall down so what we're going to do here is we're going to use them to defend our troops who are ready and waiting to come in, come on in. You know, if any uh, archer units want to come up and hide behind us, they're going to be able to. And of course, pikes work absolutely wonderfully behind shields. And we're going to set up our, um, our super huacha behind here and just sort of have a bit of a blast away under the protection of the shields. Now, just like any other shield, they are very vulnerable from behind. They'll take extra damage. And, of course, they're not facing that way with their stabby sticks. So there'll be no stabby stabby to the back, only stabby stabby to the front. And how much stabby stabby they do is actually not too bad. Um, they do maybe a little bit more than the domain spearmen, as you might expect, given a blue unit. But in the context of they... Look at this. When I'm trying to ping that one, it's pinging the wrong one. Very strange. And I had to tell my team that, uh, unfortunately, that it was a misclick or something similar. So, um, I've lost my train of thought. So just like the, the peasant, um, you know, the, the rustic era shield unit, they can take range fire all day. What these guys' advantage is, you know, they're only another, I believe, 10 leadership more than the, the peasant um, shield unit, is they have a heal and they have much more armor. For not much more. And... Of course, they also bring to your team the the bonus to your uh, honor, uh, experience, hero hero experience, all that sort of good stuff, money as well. In in the context that their job is to stop ranged fire, they work really, really well. It doesn't matter how much range they're going to pour into here. I mean, you stand them in front of Imperial Archibuzi Ace, they're going to lose a few models, right? It, it just doesn't work. <laughs> like, they're, they're not immortal. But... Um, from range fire they're absolutely perfect and once we fire the last uh, three shots of this um, super huacha uh, we're going to show you how they work against units of combat and you're going to be surprised because actually they work really well as a shield unit even against the likes of these condos or you know even purple tier sword and shield units that they, they work fine they work absolutely fine um, just like any, you know, even the Imperial Spear Guard are not going to last against a, a maul smashing into the front of them. So remember that in the context of what shields are about. And here we go. We're going to move them forward. 
and I realized here that I've got the right hand side of my um, line exposed. I'm going to have a couple of chops at him, but he's clearly got iron sides on, which is why he's standing there like a, a donkey. And we're going to put them so that our right flank is protected by that wall. And watch this. This guy runs in, and I'm just going to ignore him because I know the spearmen are going to finish him off. And they make a darn good shield wall. Here comes some shooty shooty boys from the back. We can turn them around. And all of a sudden, we take no more shooty shooty from the back. And watch this. When you do get charged in the back, it's not the end of the world. You put them in the loose formation, and they can still fight. They still have a shield that melee units particularly struggle to get through. You know, no more than any other shield unit. You know, you can punch condos in the front and they still die. But this unit is much more effective than most of the Black Dragon units because it does its job that it's designed to do. They're not immortal as you can see, but that's life. Let's skip ahead. Here we've got the Black Dragon Archers. Now, unfortunately, archers are a really poor choice um, for this stage of the game and in this environment. But, you know, there's no other options when you're just trying to run mercenary units. You have to make the best of the situation. So we're going to move them in here so they can target things. They are going to get overrun by enemy infantry, but we're just trying to disturb them at the enemy infantry at the stage anyway. But watch what happens, they're going to get attacked and start getting killed. But are they going to get any shots in? You know, even at point blank range against these chaps? They are running poison. One of the things about the Black Dragon Archers is they, the number two ability, it gives them a, a poison tick. But as you can see, they do about as well as you might expect a, a, a low tier archer unit to do in combat with a melee unit. They do get a few kills, and that's the end of them. So at that point, our team loses the game. And we can move on to the next one. So here we go in the second game of the three. And we're going to load in with Martella Lori because we're attacking. Now, what do Martella Lori do? They push siege engines. That is their entire purpose for existing. They're really not good at very much anything else. Something to remember about Martella Lori. Watch this. If you line the shot, it's got to be closer to the flag. Remember that if you're attacking. Watch what it would have done if it landed, but I put it too far right. Anyway, that's an aside. Back to the Martella Lori. Ha 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 ha. So Martella Lori's whole purpose in life is to push siege in. And they are the best unit at, in the game, bar none. They are the best unit out of any unit available in the game at pushing siege artillery. Why? Why do they push towers? Why do they push rams? Why do they do it better? It's very simple. When a Martella Lori unit is pushing some artillery, uh, I don't know what I was trying to explain here. As you can see, I've kind of like cut off the other, <laughs> the, the other uh, voiceover. But the reason Martella Lori are so good at it is because they give a damage reduction to the, the siege that they're pushing. Again, I'm hilarious. I know I'm hilarious. As you can see, I was obviously discussing it. So what happens? Um, when siege artillery uh, hits the siege equipment that they are pushing, it gets a damage reduction. And I believe it's somewhere around the 10% mark. But it actually pans out to a lot more than that. You, you know, if you're shooting a cannon at a tower, it will take you... It actually seems to take a lot more of that than another 10% shots. It's more like 20% extra shots to kill the siege equipment that it's doing it. Not only that, but the Martella Lori themselves also get um, a range damage reduction on themselves. It's worth noting they have a shield, so when things shoot at them, they will raise the shield, and they do take less damage from ordinary range fire, like, I don't know, short bow, long bow heroes, and ordinary archers. Um, but they do take 10% less damage as well as having that shield. So there's nothing more to say about Martella Lori. They are the worst get unit in the game in close combat, although they do, do blunt damage. But they are absolutely exemplary at pushing siege equipment in. And they, basically, they're only 30 leadership. This is an amazing unit. And I, it's my most used unit out of every unit I have on my, my roster. And I've got every unit in the game bar one at this point. Um, and this one I've used hundreds of times because it's simply the best Merc unit and it does its job satisfactorily beyond belief. So, anyway, let's skip to the next unit. The next unit we're pulling out is the Black Dragon Spearman. And, again, um, just like uh, I mentioned in the previous game, they do their job with 
good satisfaction. They're no Imperial Spear Guard, but what do you want for 100 odd points, right? 110, I think they are. And when you form the shield walls, especially against smaller units at the start of the game, they do really well. And watch, you can um, you can push them up and still push them into a fighting formation, and they will be able to do their job quite satisfactorily. They've still got a shield that they have to, the enemy have to try and hack through to be able to stab at them. Just like any other sword and shield infantry, just like these prefecture guard that are attacking us now. They do just fine in open formation. They don't do a lot of damage is of course the, the thing to remember. But spear units of all kinds don't do a lot of damage. That's not what they're about. They're punching bags, they're damage sponges, and their whole purpose in life is to get hit. But as you can see, we don't lose very many, even against these prefecture guards, heroes, and other assaulted enemies. Especially when you're a longsword, you can keep them alive extra, extra good, right? The number two ability is a heal, and it, it does good healing. It's very worth taking. One of the advantages they have, I don't know if I've mentioned it, is um, they have a line formation, and the other blue tier shield units, the iron cap shield, uh, spears, do not. Now watch how effective they are here. See how we move them in and we're going to isolate some people behind them? That's actually fine when you're playing shields because you can pick off the units behind and uh, once they're isolated from the unit. And look at this, now we're capturing the point with the rest of the unit comfortably on the other side of the shield wall. And you can see the damage numbers ticking up there. They're not big damage numbers. <laughs> I love that. I was particularly proud of that move. I saw the, um, the dual blades coming in so at the corner of my eye. I turned and I hit my ult, which just bounced him straight out of his ult and outside the circle so we can continue capturing. But back to the, iron uh, the black dragon spears. As you can see, they do just fine at keeping units on the other side of the shield wall, even with heroes involved. And really, they're a very effective unit. So in this game, uh, I decided I was going to quickly heal them. For whatever reason, they weren't following me. They weren't obeying the commands. And I've been finding this a lot more since the season, season 7 update happened. So sometimes I have to try and move them around a bit before they'll respond. And that can often get units killed. It's not just this unit that's happening, but it's happened ever since the start of season 7. So the unit's going to quickly heal up, and then we're going to bring it up to the top of these stairs here. As you can see, this often happens. We have an absolute uh, bucket load of range and not enough melee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these shields up, and I'm going to put them in front of our range troops to protect them. And you can tell just by the sheer volley of, of ranged fire coming out of this tunnel that there's quite a bit out there and there are ranged heroes and we're going to start taking some musket bombs soon too. As you can see you just got to force back the heroes off the shield line and they'll survive. Look at them, they're being bombed, they're being bled, they're being burned. But they're just going to hold and that's just what they do. They're a really good shield unit. They're not perfect but they're fine. They work okay. In the, in the context of what they need to be able to do, and the context of their leadership too. You know, I have heard a lot of denigration of this unit out there, but the reality is, is that they do their job. As long as you don't overextend them, they're really good. So we're going to bring back in the Black Dragon Archers. Now again, if I didn't mention it fully before, the number one ability is the, the target circle, just like all archers have, and the number two ability is a bl uh, poison attack. Um, it's not the same as like the Rattan Vipers one, it's just a straight damage rather than the, the Rattan Vipers who also cause um, weakness with theirs. But they'll work just fine in the context of being low tier archers. Now in the game meta there's just no call for low tier archers. They don't, they don't do very well. As you can see there I lowered my shield down at the wrong moment and took a lame char charge to the face so that was absolutely my fault. But even without the hero controlling them and getting pushed in on, on melee units, you can see the damage is ticking up just fine. Now that won't happen when you're fighting purple or gold tiers. They just don't do enough damage and they don't have enough armor penetration. So it's not just this archer, low tier archer unit that is bad, it's all, all low tier archer units are bad. They just they don't have the armor penetration in standard games to be able to do enough damage to get those. They do have the advantage of a poison tick, but 
that's kind of incidental. That doesn't also do as much damage. In low tier games, if you're just starting out, they'll be fine. But in general games, they just don't do very well. Move on to the next unit. Here we go, back in with the Black Dragon Javelineers. Now, in this game, we've tried to go through that main gate twice, and it hasn't worked. So let's um, not do that again. Um, this little combat, uh, I didn't do very well, because I thought to myself, just like when I'm usually using Javelins, that I don't want to waste my Javelins to just throw them into the unit. I wanted to save them until the heroes were more exposed. But I didn't consider in the back of my head that the supply point is about four steps behind me. But as you can see, the Black Dragon Javelineers, they do okay in combat. They're just fine. They, they survive just as well as any other unit. Um, they're about as tough, in my experience, as the Prefecture Guard, which might surprise you, given their stats. You can look up these stats for yourself. You know, I'm not going to go through stats in this video. Uh, they're very boring, and anyone can look them up if they'd like to see them. Um, number one is just launch a Javelin Volley at the closest unit, and number two is Circle Targeting. Now what I can see here is uh, I, we had a unit and two heroes up on the wall here. So I thought I'm going to jump up there and support them. These condos needed time to reorganise. So I allowed my unit to go forward and take some hits while the condos got organised. And as soon as the condos charged in, um, we backed off because they are better in close combat than we are. Here's a circle targeting. As you can see, um, it's not as accurate and as focused as just allowing them to shoot by themselves with the one or the V key. As you can see, being a longsword, holding this sort of point, uh, this sort of narrow corridor, is something we can do all day. And did you see how much damage there they did when allowed to target for themselves? Yep, three heroes now. They're not getting through me or my javelins. See how they're actually not terrible in combat. The shield gives them a good advantage, and they have that little shield flick going on, um, which is very similar to the Imperial Javelins. But they do fine, because that little shield throw stuns people. Eventually though, we are fighting four heroes and an entire unit plus some gunners behind that, uh, plus a longbow behind that, so the outcome was always a foregone conclusion. Let's move to the next unit. Here we are, bringing in the Sea Stag Death Dealers. Now, again, I, I don't like this unit. Um, I consider it to be the worst ranged unit in the game, and I'm going to demonstrate again why. Honestly, don't spend your money on this unit, and I'll, I'll advise a little bit more about why in the summary. Now, we'll put them up here, as you might expect from other, other gunners, because this is a good place for it. As soon as this door gets kicked down, we'll um, be able to shoot whatever's on the other side. We notice the condos, and being a longsword, our job is to stop this charge. So we do that quite successfully. None of the condos make it straight away. They all get knocked down. But these gunners at this sort of range should be hitting and, and scoring kills. But they're not. At the end of this game, the, this unit only had eight kills. And despite being in an ideal spot for gunners, because not only do they miss a lot, it's a long, long time to aim and a long, long time to fire, and a long, long time to reload. So I'm just sort of bringing them in as just cannon fodder, knowing exactly how weak they are. As you can see, that was not bad that they actually got those hits. When, they, when there are massed infantry in front of them, they don't do terribly. But you notice that the volleys there are only doing, that first volley did about seven hits, which was just phenomenal for the unit. But the second volley, even though there's an absolute ton of units in front of them. They only got two or three, which is much more normal for this unit. And now they're all gone, because they fall over in a strong breeze as well, and I brought them into a conflict zone. Whereas you see these other gunners behind us, they're lasting a lot longer. They're hitting a lot harder, and that's just what, what it's all about. Uh, I just wanted to leave it running, because everybody likes the death of a maul. Whenever I see mauls, I focus them. I'll drop whatever I'm doing to kill them all, because they deserve it. And ultimately now, uh, we do win the game, and uh, let's move on to the next game, and see if we can do any better with our mercenary units. So here we go. Um, I've got my Black Dragon Archers, and I've used them to push in the Ram, because they were the only unit available to do so. And for now, they're going to just keep moving up and shooting at anything that they can find to, to target. 
Now this uh, is not a particularly successful run for the Black Dragon Archers. Um, why? Uh, because, again, we're having movement issues. For whatever reason, they're not pushing in where they should be and not following orders. You can see that they're getting the odd shot in. But they're low tier archers. Their accuracy is poor and their damage is low. But worse is that their um, their armor penetration is extremely bad. Well, not ex just bad more than anything. And they don't have the uh, the range that full tier archers do. So even though they're taking part in the combats here, as you can see, they've killed three infantry. That's it. And at this point, they're taking fire from the things higher up uh, on the on the tower, and they just don't, don't have the range or the ability to attack them anyway. So, not very good. Let's move on to the next unit. Here we go with the Black Dragon Javelineers. So again, we're just going to uh, take them with us. The reason I've chosen the Black Dragon Javelineers is, well, not only are my unit choices very limited when I'm running all mercenary units, but... Um, they're pretty good at actually fighting in close combat. Um, the the reason for that is their shield throw more than anything, and their shield wall. So just while we're waiting for them to join in here, we'll knock everybody over that is trying to charge us, and somebody's going to drop a trip here. There we go. So we pull them back, which is of course sensible. And now the trebs are over, we can push right up on it. Kill anything in our way because we are mighty and have a longsword. Now, things like Imperial Javelins would be very good in this situation. Let's find out how these do. There's their throw. They killed some infantry because they do have high penetration and high damage. And now there's stunning infantry and all sorts of other things going on there as well. There's another throw. But as soon as they get charged by this, that's the end of them. They're not solid. They're not as solid as like the, the Black Dragon Spears or anything like that. You know, if they get a, a decent attack inflicted on them, they, they will die. The throws are good, but of course, as you saw there, um, those heroes were too intermingled with their troops. And that's really where the javelins fall down. Really, really where the javelins fall down, is that you can't specifically target very well. That and their low ammunition. Let's go to the next unit. So, um, I chose shields, apparently. I also decided I wanted a mortar. <laughs> Come on, Night Stalker, get on with it. Alright. So the Black Dragon Pikemen. Again, they're very like the, um, the Prefecture Pikes. And in this game, they're going to get to show you a little bit better about what they're about. This is probably the best of the three games for the Black Dragon Pikes. So you have to be quite conservative with them, because they need their moment, their situational unit, just like the Prefecture Pikes. You know, something like this, they can surround and mop up a hero quite nice. Now, we don't want them to do that, we don't want them to get too close in. But we do want to... <laughs> these poor guys getting picked out by mauls. Mauls are just an awful weapon. It's so bad for the game. So again, we're going to try and stab a few, but realise there's still too many infantry around the heroes there. So what's going to happen now is that they're all thinned out. And watch what happens when you actually do get hold of a hero. Squish. Dead. We actually didn't get the other kill there, but so be it. So just in the meantime, we're going to go and capture this B-point, because that's kind of important in the game. And of course, uh, we're, then we're going to touch on the other aspect of these guys, because they are pikes. What else are pikes good for? Cavalry. Especially these days with their new swamp ability. So, quickly took over. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Let's move on. Now here's uh, one of the dangers in this unit, if you don't act soon enough. Oh, one of the things about them is that, as well is that their cooldown for their charge is very long. So here, I'm waiting for those heroes to be clear of their units, but I waited too long. And they got completely overrun before I managed to do anything. And that's a real danger with this unit. Um, if you don't do it early enough, you won't get the kills because they would have been mopped up. 
Stabby Stabby some cavalry. And here's another unit of cavalry. And because I'm a longsword, I don't mind cavalry in the slightest because we can stop them all in their tracks. And then the pikes can absolutely devastate them. Beautiful. And that's really uh, the Black Dragons in a nutshell. They snipe off heroes, they stabby stabby cavalry, and here's the other problem with them is they don't have a shield, just like a lot of other pike units don't. Well, all other pike units don't. So that does tend to make them hard to, to keep alive long enough. You know, they have a lot of failings and they're very situational, this unit. But they can be fun if you want to try and snipe off heroes. So as you can see, when faced with some serious competition, they just don't make it. Let's move on to the next. By the way, I get out of here alive. Long swords are amazing. Even a cavalry charge, look at that. Let's move on. Alrighty, and then we're loading back in with the Sea Stag Death Dealers. Apparently, I'm a sucker for, for self punishment because <laughs> that's what this unit is it's punishing yourself. But I figured at this point the, the way to do it would be to have them firing at point blank range into as much things as possible to, bit, to demonstrate them a bit better. And again, you're going to see how, how useless this unit is. Here we go. Have the unit moved up yet? They're starting to come in now. Look at how long the aim and fire animation is. So bad. Look at this. And I'm going to move them up here in this video. Very soon I'm going to move them up. Move them up, Night Stalker. Here we go. And watch this. This is something that's pretty appalling. Here comes a mall hero. Watch this. One volley. Miss. Look how long it took to aim and fire. Second volley. Miss. So two entire volleys, not one single hit at something that was only 20 meters away. At this point, I've had enough of this, and I change over to my boys, the Black Dragon Shields. Spear. And here we go. We're going to play the typical shield line. And this goes pretty well for this unit as well. I do have uh, some ideas here about blowing up those archers with um, some artillery, but uh, if you look at the map, they're being surrounded and about to be destroyed anyway. I'm thinking to myself at this point, can I get some participation points? No is the answer, but I can heal my friends. Yay, longsword. One of the things about the Black Dragon Spearmen is they're very slow. Very slow. Just like all other shield units. Um, I haven't mentioned it yet, but their number one ability is also the same as all of the other um, Spearmen units. And that, of course, just forms them up into a square block and moves them forwards. I use it very seldom because it's just not useful, I guess. I'm sure there are situations, sure, I do use it time to time, but the reality is it's not as useful uh, as other things can be. You know, if you want to move into some archers, that's when you need to use them. It's not general use sort of stuff. Now when I'm using this unit, I make sure that they um, stay in the line when we're ready. And working with our other, other unit of shields on the team, we're going to do this. See how I put them up so that their, their flank is protected against the wall? That's quite important. And here's where we can't start coming, taking some range fire, which of course is not a big problem for us. I am trying to help our, our friendly shields, but it's not going to work too well. And here's where they really shine. Here comes some, um, some nice pikes, um, friendly pikes, which is really, really helpful. If you've got a shield line, um, you've got to keep the... See how they just... That's a hero attacking them in the side. Sure, it's only a short sword, but it's not too bad, you know? Look how much damage they're taking frontally here. They're getting kicked at, slashed at, shot at, and they're just surviving. Sure, these are, you know, they're condos and pike militia and prefecture guard, but there's also heroes in there. And see how we move them up in front of our unit? This is how you play shields. You keep up with the front line. Isolate units behind your shield line and let them get killed by your friends. Gotta keep those heroes off the shield line. Most of them won't willingly stand in front of you. And see here, I'm thinking if there's anything else coming around that corner, we're going to stop it attacking our unit in the back. Our, sorry, our team in the back. But of course, our friends run off that way, and we bring them up, and we decide we want to put them at the top of the stairs. So, now that they're uh, protecting the top of the stairs, it means that we can take care of anything left on this point. 
quite happily. And watch how they la um, survive against the Lanchniks. Look how much more damage they're taking against a real decent unit. They're taking a lot more damage against an effective unit. But because they're being played as part of a team, um, they're not doing too badly. They're surviving. Half of the unit is still left alive. Well, we're all just mucking around trying to get these heroes off the end point. Which is really what the shields are about. Take all that damage, be a damage sponge, and, and just get on with the job, you know? They're never going to survive. Shields' uh, mission is not to survive. And moving them up in front of these Halberdiers will certainly help keep them alive a bit longer. But at this point, they do get overrun. There's two malls over there. There is no unit in, in the game that is going to survive two malls doing their abilities on them. And that's the end of them. So, boys and girls, now let's talk about a bit of a summary. So, as you can probably tell, Sea Stag Death Dealers, are they worth buying? The answer is no. I give these guys a rating of 1. Just 1 out of 10. They can't hit the broadside of a barn door. Uh, their damage is relatively low because of that. And also because their aiming and firing animation is very, very long. So even when they do fire a shot, they miss. It's terrible. They're just awful. And I would not recommend this unit to anybody. Black Dragon Archers. I'm going to give Black Dragon Archers a 3 out of 10. Oh, why so low though? They seem okay. Sure, but they cost a lot of money or a lot of silver, right? And they just perform ordinarily as a low tier archer unit. Uh, and as you probably have seen already yourself, low tier archers really don't bring anything to the team. They don't bring anything to the warband and they contribute not a lot. They can get 10, 20, 30 kills perhaps, but I really think that your, your money's best spent elsewhere within this. I'm going to give them that 3 out of 10. Uh, Black Dragon Pikemen. Um, the big question that looms over these guys is why wouldn't you take the Prefecture Pikes instead? Because they operate just the same way. The Prefectures are a little bit tougher. Of course, if you do like the Prefecture Pike style, these guys work just as well and they will snipe heroes very effectively. So I'm going to give them a 5 out of 10. Are they worth the money? Yes. They're still a pike, they can still bog down cavalry, uh, charging kills heroes, they're just not good against other units. So, they do their job. Not bad. Black Dragon Javelineers. So, they have that little loose sort of shield wall that is okay, um, which is good for when they're not, you know, they're just waiting uh, to be used, or to block charges or incoming fire into your own units. Um, they're not many leadership. Do you want to spend your money on them? I don't know. I'm going to give these guys a 6 out of 10. Um, they're just okay. If you like having a, lo a low tier javelin unit in your army, they're absolutely useful for that. Um, they're not terrible. They've got low ammunition, but they can get two, sometimes even three volleys off, and those are very damaging. You just can't aim them in the same way as you can. You know, It's hard to compare them to something like Imperial Javelin. They're not in that sort of level. They do good damage with their javelins and then their fighting and hand-to-hand -hand combat is fine. So if you like javelins and you don't mind having a low tier javelins in your army just to get that boost uh, of the hero experience, the unit experience and of course your honor and things like that, these guys are not too bad. I'm going to give them a 6 out of 10. Black Dragon Spearmen. Do they do their job? Absolutely. They are just great for the 110 leadership that uh, that they cost and I would say uh, um, that they're very useful you know they're, they're much better than the iron cap sp uh, spearmen for example because they have the line formation I would take these guys over iron cap spearmen any day and iron cap spearmen are another 65 odd leadership on top of them um, they have their own heel which is good if you're not a longsword like I am and they do stand up to, to combat, even against heroes, as you saw in some of the games. I'm going to give these guys an 8 out of 10, because they do their job really well. I would recommend this unit. Martellalori. Do they do their job? What is the job of Martellalori? Their job is to push in siege equipment. While they're doing that, they get a damage reduction on themselves, and a massive damage reduction on the siege artillery. They can't fight in combat. No peasant unit can, in reality. So I'm going to give these guys a 10 out of 10 and I think that everybody should own this unit if you've got some money to spend on the game this is where you should spend them in the Martellalori contract 
they are just amazing at what they do and they're only 30 leadership you get all of the bonuses of having a premium unit with only 30 leadership out of your warband which in most cases you're going to take a peasant unit anyway if you're attacking and it doesn't really take much out of your warband if you're defending i strongly recommend that you get the matella lorry so uh, i hope you learned something new or you just enjoyed the battles and i hope you've learned something about mercenaries thanks for coming to the channel